Greetings from Basecamp, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom. This is day four of our trek, and we will continue to investigate the tools needed for a successful wisdom trek. Today we're recording our podcast from our studios in Home 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is starting to feel a lot like summer in the South, but so far, it hasn't been overly humid. If you would like to get to know me better, please check out About Wisdom Trek on the Wisdom Trek.com website. We are continuing to consider what tools or equipment that we need in order to ensure the success and enjoy our wisdom trek. Yesterday, on day three, we looked at the tool of joy, which is just one of the eight tools that are encased within our backpack of love. On day two, I did challenge you to visualize that your life as a wheel or bicycle tire, with love being the hub of that wheel, and the remaining tools or attributes are the spokes stemming around from that perfect hub. The remaining spokes in our wheel, or tools in our backpack as I used in our second analogy, are peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These attributes are referred to in the Bible as the fruit of the Spirit and should be manifested in our lives the same manner as an apple tree produces apples. Growing up on an apple orchard, I have first-hand experience on how much work is involved in cultivating or pruning, fertilizing, and spraying the trees in order to hope to have or produce a decent crop. Even after doing all that we could physically, we realized that God would ultimately have to produce the increase. We had many good crops, but man, we had a lot that were not good. In the same way, in order to allow these eight attributes to flourish, we must cultivate them within our lives and to make sure that they are rooted in the rich soil of love. Today we will look at the tool or spoke of peace. If you have not taken the time to review the previous episodes, I would encourage you to do so. During the first two weeks, the nuggets of wisdom that we digest will build on each other and lay a foundation for living an abundant life and creating a living legacy. As we consider peace today, it is very important that we grasp the concept that true peace is not the absence of strife or turmoil in our lives, but the ability to deal or cope with the situations with a minimal amount of stress and anxiety. It has been said a wise person recognizes that peace is the state of tranquility or serenity even when the storms of life rage around you. Along our trek of life, we realize that we will run into obstacles and difficulties. This is the stuff that life is made of. These difficulties may be caused by our own unwise choices, or they may be beyond our control. We experience situations like a broken or troubled relationship that we can't mend, or a tragedy that we can't reverse. We experience problems at home, at school, and at work. We all desire to live peaceful lives, both individually and as a nation, but few seem to obtain it. Wars range on within us and on the outside. Peace seems to elude us, and we are constantly anxious. As with both love and joy, peace is an attribute that we must constantly and deliberately infuse into the fabric of our lives. To be wise and to create a living legacy, we need to have peace in our lives and allow that peace to permeate us and then be a peacemaker into the lives of others. Whenever possible, I like to break down any situation as simply as possible, because that's how my mind thinks. So let's look at the stress and anxiousness that we allow in our lives, which are the enemies of peace. Peace, or the lack of it, starts in our minds. They're based on our thoughts. We either are making choices that are robbing us of our peace, or there's situations or other people causing us a lack of peace. In the first case, we have complete control over our own choices, And in the second scenario, we cannot control the situations or people, but we can control how we respond to them. If we are lacking peace, then we need to start making wiser choices, or we need to choose on how we're going to respond to the situations that we cannot control. So I'd like to give us three points that will help to ensure our peace. Number one is to change your focus. If you are constantly focusing on situations that are causing you anxiety and the lack of peace, then you will never be able to get beyond them and gain more peace in your own life. Number two, change your circumstances. If you are in a harmful or negative situations or environments that are robbing you of your peace, change your circumstance and or environment. And if you cannot change your circumstances and environment, find ways to minimize the impact that they are having on your lives. Some circumstances may be self-imposed, and we have to live with those, at least for now. That is why every choice that we make each day is so important. And then number three, change your attitude. One thing that we do have complete control over, regardless of our situation, is our attitude. It is not the issues of life that robs us of our peace, but how we allow those issues to impact us. Changing your attitude may not be easy, but it is possible. No one can control your attitude except for yourself. 
As a person of faith and a Christ follower, I do draw on the teachings of the scriptures to help infuse peace into my life. First, Christ is referred to as the Prince of Peace in Isaiah 9.6. So by following him, then I should also have peace instilled in my life. As we are on our trek, we will need a good set of hiking boots to last the duration of the trek of life. Ephesians 6.15 uses an analogy that peace is our hiking boots, and we should wear them and be prepared for our journey. And it says, For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. Certainly my faith is my foundation for peace, and it exceeds anything that I can understand. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 encourage us to, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Using our wheel analogy, today and each day, let us make sure that the spoke of peace is securely fastened, along with joy, into the hub of love. Or as our second analogy stated, let us consciously place the tool of peace into our backpack of love. It is very difficult to be at peace at all times. Life does produce stress and anxiety. I'm certainly not immune to it, but it is how we respond to these situations in life that will allow the seeds of peace to take root and grow in the fertile soil of love. Kimberly Jones put it this way, Don't let people pull you into their storms. Pull them into your peace. So let's take one day at a time, for today is all that we have. Well, that will finish our podcast and journal for today. Tomorrow we will inspect the tool or attribute of patience, which is a very close relative to peace, and if not control, will rob us of our peace. So please check into camp tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. I do encourage you to leave a discussion topic, comment, suggestion, or questions in the comment form on wisdom-trek.com forward slash day four, or email me at guthrie at venturecg.com. That's guthrie, G-U-T-H-R-I-E, at venturecg.com. If you've not done so already, please take time to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on either iTunes or Stitcher or an Android player. We also have a subscribe to podcast page on wisdom-trek.com. Please leave us a rating for each episode also. That would mean so much and spread the word to everyone you know to join us on our Wisdom Trek. That is how we'll grow. I do want to mention that the podcast that you listen to each day will be very similar in nature to the journal entries that we have on the website. But if you might want to review the journal entries because they will include pictures, tweetable sayings, free download PDF documents or tools that will be helpful along our journey. You can access those tools from our free resources page on wisdom-trek.com. And as we trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy the journey, and to create a great day. See you tomorrow.